Hello, my dear friends. Today, we will look at the diary of a German lieutenant. Heinz Schirmann began to write his diary since the day he was assigned to the Russian front. In the diary, he describes his first embarrassing acquaintance with his soldiers, the defense of the river crossing, and the assault at Novgorod. But before that, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations is a military-themed strategy game set in the late 20th and early 21st centuries using modern warfare technology. You can try to overcome the swamps and rivers in Russia with your troops, but there is also the danger of a complete failure of your military campaign. After all, you need to take into account logistics, economics, the development of science and infrastructure, as well as the morale of your country's population. By the way, you could choose any nation. Just imagine fighting in Russia with a Mexican army. The craziest scenarios are possible in this game, because it is you who decide which way your country will develop, and only you choose the direction of military attacks. The cross-platform play is available in this game. Thanks to this, it will be much easier for you to control the battlefield, because you can play both on a PC and on your mobile phone under one account. By following the link in the description of the video, you will receive an exclusive gift, 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. The offer is valid only for 30 days. Don't waste time. So now, let's get started. July 18, 1941. I was told at lunch about my assignment to Russia. July 26th. I arrived in the morning in the city of Dvinsk, and from there to the forest base camp of the Reserve High Command. The assignment states 126th Infantry Division. It is somewhere in the vicinity of Petersburg. July 27th. After lunch, I walk around the city of Dvinsk. What a tragic picture. About half of a major city is ruined. This is all because of the Russian War. July 28th. At 8 a.m., I'm on standby. I go by train to Pasiton. Here, I stay for the night. In the morning, I continue my way in a police automobile. July 29th. I spent the night on the island. July 30th. I drive in a truck over roads which are impossible to describe. July 31st. As in old times, I drive very slowly, kilometer by kilometer, along with the automobiles heading towards our direction. August 1st, 1941. Early in the morning, I arrived at the division. And here, the hellish dance already begins. I take the platoon. The weather-beaten faces of the soldiers stare at me. Most of them have already been on one or two campaigns. The few words I address them make them smile. But the next few days will make us closer. Our mission is to guard the crossing of the reinforced regiment across the Shellen River at Nagoststrupen. We take up field positions on the south bank of the river. When the regiment crosses the river, all is quiet. But right after that, we get a blessing. August 2nd. We lie in our holes, entrenched. In the daytime, no one can dare come out. It is only at night that we have some freedom. On Saturday, things went well. The company had no casualties. I'm still a rookie at war. Occasionally, I still hide my head when a gunshot sounds. But I'm slowly getting used to it. It is almost possible to be sure whether a shell will hit 5 or 10 meters away from the target. If it hits closer, you have to hide your head. August 3rd. We are still lying in the trench. There are no losses in my platoon during the day. In the neighboring one, there are two wounded and one had a nervous breakdown. Things are considerably quieter in the evening. The Russians must be rotating. In the evening, to our great joy, there is a thunderstorm. August 4th. We still see the river close to us, but it is not possible to bathe. I hope that will soon change. I haven't seen any Russians yet this morning. However, they are presumably taking shelter, well camouflaged in their trenches. True, I have spotted a couple of idiots in the meantime. They are sitting in the middle of a field in purposely built field fortifications. There is a river separating us that is so wide that nothing would probably happen. But we must keep our guard up. Bloody artillery! The enemy artillery sends us such things we can't defend against. But all this will be over one day. I hope it will be over before winter. If not, it may all cost us a lot of crap. August 5th. I was assigned to the 3rd Battalion, 424th Regiment, late night yesterday. I moved to my new position at midnight. My new company is on rest after a heavy fight. 
but I guess that'll be over tomorrow. Anyway, I like it here. I take command of the first platoon. August 6th. We expect a big attack. For now, we rest. August 7th. Not a lot happened. August 8th. The Russians attacked at night one of the platoons of the 3rd Company. We move to a new position. We stay for a day in the wind and rain in a roadside ditch. August 9th. At dawn, we attack the Russians, who are not there on the spot. How could they send us with two battalions against 70 Russians? We expect a big offensive, preparing new positions opposite the village of Shimsk. August 10th. At 4 a.m. there is a big offensive. Reichtofen's Air Corps and the 21st Army Corps are on the attack. This is something worth seeing. I would hate to be a Russian this day. The bombs fall continuously from 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. August 11th. The offensive goes on. We move towards Novgorod. The troops are about to cross the Shellen. We have been crossed. Now we are on the other bank. The Russians must have entrenched themselves. We have to admit that the Russians are better at entrenching than we are but it would be better if we didn't have to entrench in advance. August 12th. The local battles in the Russian woods are our reality. It can even make a healthy man sick. August 13th. We spent the day and night at Lake Ilmen. August 14th. In the woods on the road to Voynichi, we make the last halt before Novgorod. There is a huge number of troops on the road. It is good that the Russian aircraft is broken up, or we would be an easy prey. August 15th. We are approaching Novgorod by detours. The attack of dive bombers is at 5.30 p.m., aiming exclusively at the infantry. At the same time, the infantry comes forward. That same evening, the western part of Novgorod, including the Kremlin, is occupied. The night has turned to day. So brightly the wooden houses are burning. August 16th. At dawn, we sweep the western part of Novgorod. At 7 a.m., the commander of one of the squads of my platoon, Felvebelsivs, conducts reconnaissance in the Kremlin. At 7.25 a.m., a Swatska banner flies on the Kremlin. We take the Kremlin. The Novgorod Kremlin is the most ancient part of the city. It was built in the 15th century. The buildings and monuments are magnificent. Sadly, the churches have been made into museums. We stay in the Kremlin. August 17th. This is a day of rest in the Kremlin. Our bombers dropped two bombs near us, but no harm done. The other troops cross the Volkov and get ready to attack. August 18th. The eastern part of Novgorod is assaulted and taken. Our losses are remarkably small. There are only seven wounded. I go on combat guard, having two wounded and one man crushed by a fallen tree. August 19th, 1941. This is the day we rest. This is where his diary ends. He was killed on August 25, 1941 on the eastern bank of the Volkov River near Gorodichi. That's all for today. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the world with Conflict of Nations. An exclusive gift will help you with this. You can pick it up by clicking on the link in the description of the video. You will receive 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. The offer is valid only for 30 days. Hurry up! Follow the link right now and this gift will greatly help you in realizing your grandiose plans.